grade 11 life science excretion structure and functioning of the urinary system learners we're going to look at the general structure of the entire urinary system in broad outline to that we will go to figure 2.5.3 showing the general structure of the entire urinary system in humans you will notice that we have a pair of kidneys and to the kidneys we have blood supply blood is coming to the kidney via the renal artery blood will be leaving the kidney via the renal vein the kidneys are then connected to the bladder and the bladder is the structure that stores the urine the ureter is bringing the urine from the kidney to the bladder and then when the bladder is full the urine is passed out of the body via the urethra okay now generally what's happening here is the blood coming into the kidney via the renal artery has nitrogenous waste in it for example urea uric acid and so on this nitrogenous waste needs to be removed from the body so the kidney acts like a filter it removes all the nitrogenous waste so that the blood that's now leaving via the renal vein actually has no nitrogenous waste in it and can be passed to the rest of the body that nitrogenous waste that was collected and filtered inside the kidney then passes down the ureter into the bladder and out to the urethra that's the general structure and functioning of the urinary system now how exactly is this nitrogenous waste filtered and the urine is formed to answer that question we need to get into the kidney itself so we need a detailed structure of the internal part of the kidney and we need to look at how the different parts play a role in forming your urine and for that learners we move to our next diagram and there's your internal structure of the kidney you'll notice the kidney has well the blood supply we've discussed renal artery coming in renal vein leaving on the outside there's a double unit membrane called the renal capsule on the inside there is two main parts the outer part is called the cortex the inner part is called the medulla then you have pyramids as you can see here and inside the pyramid you'll notice these lines these lines represent ducts and they call the ducts of bellini you have a pelvis and you have the ureter okay now that is the structure now what happens inside the kidney remember the renal artery is bringing in blood with nitrogenous waste the blood is then filtered inside the kidney all the nitrogenous waste is removed and then the blood leaves via the renal vein with no nitrogenous waste the nitrogenous waste then moves via the pyramids the ducts of bellini it passes into the calyces into the pelvis and out to the ureter from the ureter if we move back to our first diagram from the ureter it's into the bladder it's 
stored in the bladder and passed out. Okay. All right. So as you can see, what we're saying is the kidney is actually acting as a filter and it's removing all the nitrogenous waste. Now, the kidney does not do this function on its own. The kidney has a functional unit inside it, which will actually form your urine and remove your nitrogenous waste. This functional unit is called the nephron. And if you look carefully at this diagram, there's your nephron shown to you here. Now learners, the nephron is actually microscopic. You cannot see it with the naked eye, but for, for us to understand what's going on, not drawn to scale, there's the nephron shown to you. This nephron is the functional unit of the kidney and the nephron will actually make the urine and remove your nitrogenous waste. So, to get into the details as to how the nitrogenous waste is removed from the kidney, we have to now look at the nephron in detail as well. So our next diagram takes us to the nephron. My right, learners, now we have, there's a diagram showing you the nephron, figure 2.5.5. Uh, important to note, there is approximately a million of these nephrons in your kidney and their function is to remove your nitrogenous waste. Now, it consists of a cup structure called the Bauman's capsule, a proximal convoluted tubule, a loop of Henle, a distal convoluted tubule, and a collecting duct. That's the nephron itself. But we also have the blood supply, and the blood supply coming from the renal artery is your afferent arterial entering into the nephron, forming a first capillary network in here, and that's called the glomerulus. The glomerulus and the Bauman's capsule together is called the Malpighian body. The first capillary network rejoins and forms the efferent arterial. Then it forms a second capillary network which moves along the entire nephron which eventually joins up and forms the renal vein again. All right, now, the point of this entire nephron is that blood is coming into the nephron, it's gonna filter through substances which are useful and harmful, these substances, which is now called your filtrate, is gonna move along here in the tube. And while it's moving, the idea is that the second capillary network is going to reabsorb everything that's useful, like glucose, water, and so on, from your filtrate. By the time it comes, the filtrate comes to the distal convoluted tubule, and especially once it's in the collecting ducts, then it's going to contain only nitrogenous waste. All your useful substances would have been reabsorbed into your blood. That's the basic idea of the nephron. So using that idea, the three main functions of the nephron is glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, tubular excretion, 
And the fourth one, which we can add on is osmoregulation. In other words, regulating your water content, which concentrates along this part, the loop of Henley, as well as you're collecting ducts. Learners, these two are the functions, which we won't concentrate on in this lesson, but regulating your blood pH and your sodium content is also part of the functions of the kidney. Right. Now, if we take the first function, glomerular filtration, it occurs in the Malpighian body, right? There's the diagram more in detail. Blood coming in, it's entering through the afferent arterial and gets into the glomerulus and leaves via the afferent arterial. Now, something very important to note here is the afferent arterial is much larger in diameter than the afferent. So it means more blood is coming in to the glomerulus, but the amount of blood can, that can leave is less. This creates pressure inside the glomerulus. And this pressure now forces substances through into the tubule, which will now into the capsular space, which is now called your glomerular filtrate. This filtrate contains both useful and harmful substances. Things that will enter as the filtrate, water, salts, glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, and glycerol. These are all useful. Waste substances like urea, uric acid, also will pass through. Now, to allow this filtration process, the specialized cells called podocyte cells, they have slit pores between them. And these pores will only allow the smallest of substances to filter through. Substances like proteins, which are too large, will not pass through here into the filtrate. Right. Once you have your filtrate, then we're going to move on to the next function. Go back to our diagram on the nephron. We are now the filtrate is here. As the filtrate moves, when it comes to the proximal convolute tubule, at this point, most of the glucose, almost 99 to 100% of the glucose is reabsorbed into the second capillary network. And water, some water is reabsorbed. The filtrate moves along the loop of Henle, and the loop of Henle is involved in osmoregulation. In other words, it, at this point, a lot of your water may be reabsorbed into the second capillary network as well. Filtrate moves along, and as it's moving along, then tubal excretion can take place, which is the third important function. What does this mean? From your second capillary network, whatever waste is remaining in the second capillary network can be excreted into the tubule and passed into the filtrate. By the time the filtrate is now in the collecting duct. So learn us what has happened here is the filtrate has come through both useful and harmful substances. And as the filtrate was moving along the tube, useful substances were reabsorbed into the second capillary network. And from the second capillary network, nitrogenous waste was excreted back into the tube. And this now ensured that by the time when they're collecting duct, the only substances that should be in your urine is nitrogenous waste. Okay, learners. I hope this has given you an understanding of the structure of the urinary system and the functioning of the urinary system, right? We've gone into details with the main functions of the kidney, which is tubular 
excretion, fibular reabsorption, and glomerular filtration. And we included osmoregulation as well. And you've also seen the details of the nephron and how these functions take place.